WCIA 3 News at 10. Today has been crazy. The wettest snow we've seen in a long time. Parts of central Illinois got more than half a foot of snow and we're not done with the wild winter weather yet. Good evening, I'm Jen Lask. And I'm Mark Maxwell. We've got Jacob Dickey with us here now. Jacob, we've had ice, we've had snow. Crews are still working to restore power to some homes. Yeah, and we're adding here. freezing fog to the mix here. Just a lot of winter weather all in one day here. Mark, I know you're ready for spring, uh, but we've got to get through the impact still from this morning snow right here to the power outage numbers as of 1030. DeWitt County at 500, McLean County at about 2000. Statewide, we're only at 3200 outages. This number, though, has actually crept up just a little bit uh, in the past hour or so. Here's a look at why we've had problems. Eastern Carolina Electric Cooperative, uh, we had a, a representative from there send us this photo. Look at all of that ice on the infrastructure. A big problem for parts of central Illinois. This is what it looked like last night in Decatur. A snowy scene indeed out there. And we, the reason for that is because we've had a lot of snow. Last night, a core of snow from 6 to 10 inches fell across parts of central Illinois. Visibility right now is reduced. We're down to near zero in spots out there before things will get better tomorrow. We do have a dense fog advisory, though, in place. We'll talk more about this, what this means for road conditions tomorrow, and have a look at the next system coming our way, uh, coming up in just a little bit. Mark and Jen. All right, thank you, Jacob. Well, many of us got the chance to enjoy the snow. Others were busy at work. And for snowplow drivers, the job can get quite dangerous. WCIA 3's Jamie Mays has more. It's the first big snowfall of the year. It's super fun to be out here. Uh, we didn't think there was going to be enough snow, but, but there is. I'm really excited because whenever it snows, we normally always get to come down and sled. And sledding is probably my favorite thing about when it snows. For some people like Joshua Strawbridge, the owner of Halligan Landscaping, this is more than just fun and games. We've been waiting for this since July. It's a chance to get to work. It's a stress reliever being able to, to make the money that comes in to, to pay the bills. But business can pose a threat when Strawbridge gets out on the roads. People not paying attention, they cause a hazard to the road. They're not watching the road, they're not watching the plow truck drivers. It's very dangerous all around for everybody. I mean, a plow truck, you're talking uh, a normal, regular size SUV or a truck, and they've got a 800 to 1,000 pound plow on the front of it, it's like a little mini tank. So he's urging people to be careful. Pay attention to the flashing lights. Most of your trucks are going to have flashing lights. They're supposed to. Um, we've got a, a strobe on each one of our trucks. Um, it's, it's absolutely imperative that you pay attention, both the driver of the plow truck and the, the civilians. In Muhammad, Jamie Mays, WCIA 3, your local news leader. If you're driving behind a snowplow, don't pass it. Follow a safe distance behind it. Take a look, meanwhile, at our video from Monticello from our Sky 3 drone. The city had roughly eight inches of snow. Emergency crews had a lot of work cut out for them and asked people to clean or clear any fire hydrants to help them out. The roads were cleared pretty quickly in Springfield. The city got roughly three and a half inches of snow. And by the way, if you plan on driving around downtown this week, free parking there has been extended through the end of February. February. Shoveling snow out of the driveway is a common chore, but for some it can also include risk. Doctors say heart attack is especially common after days with heavy snowfall. They say the blood vessels can constrict when you breathe in all that cold air. That combined with the toll of exercising and lifting those heavy amounts of snow can trigger a heart attack. And doctors say it can happen anywhere between the middle of uh, shoveling six uh, hours after you're done. If they're insisting on doing it, then uh, don't try to be Superman. Uh, uh, get a smaller shovel. Um, take frequent breaks. Doctor also says the most important thing is to pace yourself. For everything from the latest outage reports to our viewer pictures, you can download our free news app, WCI3, right there on your screen. Loved ones gathered for a visitation for a Champagne firefighter and his wife after they were killed in a crash after Christmas. Dominic Smith served in the department for 16 years. WCIA 3's Jared Farmer has more. A visitation was held for Dominic and Kimberly Smith at Cornerstone Church in Woodland. The two passed away after a car accident that also took the life of their two dogs. Friends, family, and firefighters all gathered at Cornerstone Church to pay their respects to Dominic and Kimberly Smith. 
Their children, Joshua and Brianne, say that the experiences, memories, and life lessons that they gave them are something they'll carry on for the rest of their lives. Yeah, they loved, um, they didn't hold anything back, and they gave a lot of uh, reasons to look up to them. You know, they were loyal, they were honest, um, I mean, they just cared about everybody. You know? They were willing to, to give their back off, or give the shirt off the back to you know, anybody. He was always teaching. My mom was always laughing at his jokes. Uh, just, I'll never forget that kind of stuff. They were known to be avid outdoorsmen, survivalists, cooks, trip takers, and loving parents and grandparents. Kimberly Smith was 60 and Dominic was 55. My kids are very fortunate to have a Grammy and Papa. Grammy was in the kitchen. My daughter and son got to you know, enjoy her food and uh, dad always had a lesson. Something was always turned into something. My parents, you know, were, they were both my heroes. Um, and they still are, always will be. And, uh, you know, keep on trying to make them proud. In Woodland, I'm Jared Farmer, WCIA 3, your local news leader. The funeral will take place tomorrow at 1. There will also be another visitation an hour before it starts. A founding member of Decatur's Unitarian Universalist Fellowship Church died at the age of 109 years old. John Regan died Thursday. He was a World War II veteran who went on to serve as the NAACP's attorney. Mark Sorensen knew Reagan through the church and said he left a deep and lasting impact. He's, he helped the, uh, this uh, new fellowship um, buy an old house and uh, renovate it and uh, make it into our Unitarian house where we had uh, church services up through 1983 when we built the brand new church. So he kept the fledgling church alive and uh, helped support it for a long time. Regan befriended James Parsons in his youth. Parsons was the first African-American federal district judge, and as the NAACP's attorney, uh, Regan helped to fight against discrimination in Decatur restaurants. Public health officials have announced 4,469 new cases of COVID-19 in the state, in addition to 81 more deaths. Labs reported less than 50,000 tests in the past day. The statewide positivity rate for cases is 8.3%. As of last night, 3,817 people were hospitalized with COVID-19. Of those 798 patients were in the ICU, 462 were on ventilators. The new members of the 117th Congress took the oath of office today. During the pandemic and all the political strife uh, on Wednesday, lawmakers will count their first votes of the Electoral College and ratify President-elect Joe Biden's victory over President Trump. But a group of senators plans to uh, object to those results, citing President Trump's unsubstantiated and disputed claims of widespread voter fraud. CBS News White House correspondent Ben Tracy has the latest. I hope you're God. I do. I do. Elbow bumps instead of handshakes were the new norm as Vice President Mike Pence swore in senators on the first day of the new congressional session. To say the 117th Congress convenes at a challenging time would indeed be an understatement. From political division to a deadly pandemic to adversaries around the world, the hurdles before us are many and they are serious. But there's also plenty of reason for hope. The majority leader's message comes as a group of at least a dozen GOP senators, led by Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, plan to object when Congress ratifies President-elect Joe Biden's 306 electoral votes on Wednesday. But most Republicans are not on board with trying to overturn the election results on President Trump's behalf. This, this is bad for, bad for the country and bad for the party. On Sunday, a bipartisan group of 10 senators released a statement saying the voters have spoken and Congress must now fulfill its responsibility to certify the election results. In audio of a phone call obtained by CBS News, President Trump is heard pressuring Georgia's Republican Secretary of State Saturday to recalculate results of the state's election, which Biden won. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,000 780 votes. Vice President Pence has also signaled that he supports the attempt by Trump allies to overturn the election results, despite judges across the country and the Supreme Court rejecting dozens of challenges. Ben Tracy, CBS News, the White House. In a statement tonight, Senator Dick Durbin said, quote, President Trump's recorded conversation with Georgia Secretary of State Raffensperger is more than a pathetic rambling delusional rant. 
Durbin goes on to say, the president's disgraceful effort to intimidate an elected official into deliberately changing and misrepresenting the legally confirmed vote totals in his state strikes at the heart of our democracy and merits nothing less than a criminal investigation. And turning to weather, Jacob, you have been tracking everything for 2021 so far. A little I'm, bit of ice, some snow. Yeah, I'm ready for my break. It comes tomorrow, but tonight we've got to talk about some fog out there. This is in Charleston. Just like the snow, folks, you don't have fog yet. It's coming. It will be here by tomorrow morning. We expect to see it widespread. Already seeing it in some spots. We'll talk about what it means for the travel forecast tomorrow. Coming up after this.